Among those uh, traditions that don't appeal to political theology is this tradition that begins in the West with Thomas Hobbes. And what distinguishes it from these other intellectual traditions is that it sets out uh, self-consciously to uh, work a break with Christian political theology and more deeply with political theology as such. How does it do that? Well, uh, I come up with the term, you always need a hook like this in a book, called the Great Separation, which is that with Hobbes, what changes is not all the things we usually pay attention to in Hobbes, uh, the, uh, uh, the image of the Leviathan, how much authority he has, who the sovereign is, life being nasty, brutish, and short, and all the rest, but rather what Hobbes doesn't talk about. That is that Hobbes manages in the Leviathan to change the subject of Western political discourse. That up until that point, a large part of Western political discourse took the form of, once we understand God's intentions from his nature, how do those intentions work themselves out in political life? So that in order to understand what we're to do here on earth, we need to understand something about the nexus between God, man, and the world. What Hobbes does is, as I said, change the subject from God to why human beings believe in God and why they think that God has commands for us in political life. Hobbes cannot refute political theology, any particular political theology, or political theology as such, because there's no way to refute a, an appeal to revelation. But what Hobbes managed to do was to cast enough suspicion on those who appeal to revelation that he simply took our eye off the ball, so to speak, and got us instead asking why it is that people come to believe these things about religion and politics, why it is that that tends to lead to violence in the extreme, this cycle of uh, religious and political violence and fear, and how we might short circuit that. And then he says, we'll get back to the question of God later. He never does, and we never do. <laughs> Something happened there. I mean, he did what, um, you know, the, the, the most revolutionary thing a thinker ever does, it seems to me, is not refute somebody, but change the subject. The story then goes on. We pass through Rousseau and his uh, concerns about Hobbes' political anthropology. We go from political theology to political anthropology. I then talk about how liberal political theology grows out of that. And uh, the rest of the passion play works out until we get down to Weimar. Um, I won't rehearse all of that. I've only been given uh, a few minutes. Um, but. Uh, I want to emphasize, and I hope we get to talk about, uh, how much weight this distinction or, or this definition of political theology will bear and how much it helps us to understand how we think now and how we live now.